Hey, hi guys. So welcome back to our channel. So today we are going to discuss some of the interview questions which were shared by one of my connections in LinkedIn. Okay, so these are the interview questions asked in Cognizant. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Uh, we'll cover SQL questions first and then we'll move to the Power BI. So for SQL, uh, first question is how would you optimize your slow running query with multiple joins? So what are the steps for this? So first of all, you can tell that you, you will uh, analyze the execution plan and identify any bottlenecks. I mean, if anything is taking extra time that you will analyze. Then what you can say is, uh, I'll ensure proper indexes are created on join and filter columns. Okay, properly you have to create indexes on join and filter columns that you can tell. And then you can tell that you will try to reduce the number of columns. Sometimes we use select star and select star will take a lot of space, right? So we can reduce the number of columns and mention only the required columns that you can do. And sometimes uh, what else you can tell is uh, you can break the large queries into small temporary tables. And also if it is possible, you can use the CTs as well. So likewise, you can answer this first question. Uh, then moving on to second one, what is a recursive CTE and can you provide an example of when to use it? So for this, what you can tell is recursive CTE means it is a query that will repeatedly execute itself until a condition is met. So whenever we, what we'll do is we will specify a condition and uh, until the condition is met, this query will keep repeatedly executing itself. So this one, when we will mostly use this, you can give example as uh, employee manager relationships. That example you can give. So in these cases, you can use the CTEs. <coughs> And then third one is explain the difference between cluster and non-cluster indexes. Some people might not be aware of this. So this is basically theory type of question. So cluster index means it will physically sort the data inside the table. And there can be only one cluster index in the table. Okay. And non-cluster index means it will create a separate structure that will store pointers to the actual data. So what happens is clustered index will be physically present in the table, but the non-clustered index that will create a separate structure and that will store pointers to the actual data. So clustered indexes are primary are used on the primary keys and non-clustered indexes, they are used on frequently searched columns. Okay. This is the case. Then fourth question is write a query to find the second highest salary in each department. This is like the mandatory question in almost every SQL interview. Okay, so if you do not know this, please take a screenshot of it and practice it. Okay, this is like 90% chance this question will be there in almost all the SQL interviews nowadays. So here what we have done is we have used dense rank and whenever since we want second highest salary, so we simply used rank equal to 2 and we used dense rank. Okay, this function. And remaining things are just normal. So what we did is we partitioned based on department ID. Then we sorted using order by uh, we sorted and we sorted in descending order because we want highest salary. That's why. And then we simply filtered the rank too. Okay. So just practice this and make sure you know this question before attending interview. Okay. And fifth one is explain window functions and provide examples of row number, rank and dense rank. So window functions means it will give you uni, uh, it will give the uh, perf <coughs> window functions perform calculations without any grouping okay so basically group by will do the grouping right but window functions without any grouping itself it will perform calculations and it will provide the answer that that you can say for window functions and for row number what it will do is it will give the unique numbers it will give unique numbering uh, what will rank do Rank will give same rank for ties, but it will skip numbers. I mean, if two values have same uh, same value, then what it will do is it will give the same rank for both, but it will skip the number. So suppose uh, first person got first rank and second and third, if they have same value, then uh, they will give the same rank. But when the next person comes, it will skip one single digit. Hope you understood. Okay. For dense rank, what it will do is it will give the same rank, but it will not skip the numbers. Okay. So for the difference is that rank and dense rank both will give same numbers in the uh, term of tie, but uh, rank will skip the number, but dense rank will does not skip number in the case of ties. Okay. So just refer to this as well and uh, uh, remove all the confusion because this is also very repeated question. Okay. And then explain acid properties. So for acid properties, what you can say is this is also theory question and very common uh, basic question. So acid stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation and durability. So atomicity ensures that entire transaction will either succeed or fail. Okay. Consistency means it will main maintain the data integrity. Isolation means it will keep the transactions separate. One transaction will not affect the other transaction. 
durability means you can simply say it will ensure the committed data is permanently saved suppose if the state anything is saved it will be saved again not, nothing will affect that saved thing that is called durability okay uh, so these are the uh, acid properties which you can explain then next question is write a query to calculate a running total this is also very common there is 90 percent chance this question also will be available uh, will be asked in the interviews so just go through this as well uh, so this is very simple we have used uh, partition by here and then we have partition based on department id then we did sorting based on the salary and then what we did we what we want is we want based on specific conditions and we want it based on row running total so for running total i have used sum function sum of salary right a query to calculate running total so i did sum of salary based on what did we calculate we calculated it based on department id okay just take a screenshot of this as well so practice this one as well next we will be moving to the power bi questions explain the concept of context transition in dax and provide an example so context transition simply you can tell that it will convert the row context into filter context whenever we are using the calculate function so calculate function is very important function in the power bi so if you are already having experience then you will definitely know this okay so it will allow the row based values to affect the entire filter context likewise you can tell it then how do you optimize a complex power bi report for faster performance for this you can uh, tell some pointers you can tell that you will remove the unused columns and rows then you can tell you can use the star schema modeling uh, then you can say we we can avoid the complex calculated columns and if possible we can use the measures wherever possible over the calculated tables or columns and then we can use the aggregations and if possible we, will, we can use the incremental refresh these are all the things which you can do to optimize a complex power bi report okay and next one is describe the process of creating and using calculation groups in power bi so calculation groups what is the reason for using this it will allow us to reuse common logic like time intelligence without creating additional multiple filters okay multiple measures are not needed uh, when we use calculation groups whenever there is a common logic we can create calculation group and we can reuse it this is the purpose so how to create it you can create it using the tabular editor and apply it using the calculation items so you can create it in the tabular editor this is how you can answer how do you handle large data sets in power bi without compromising performance so for this what you can tell is uh, i use import mode wherever possible and you can say that you use implement uh, incremental refresh whenever possible and also data model size can be uh, optimized this you can say and then uh, you can use the aggregations wherever possible and also uh, if direct query is allowed and if the size uh, data size matches then you can use the direct query so these things why they ask is because nowadays data set which we are handling is very large so that's why they ask how you uh, handle the large data sets because that's important so this kind of question also you can expect and what is composite model in power bi and how it can be used effectively so composite model this is a very easy question it will it is a model where it will allow combining both import and direct query tables in the same model it is useful when part of the data needs real time access and part of it can be catched so this is the use case which you can tell okay so next one how does the use relationship function work and when would you use it so use relationship when we will use is whenever there are two tables in power bi during modeling we can create only one active relationship right but uh, we can make other we can create other relationships but that will be inactive so whenever you want to use the inactive relationship then you have to use this use relationship to make the inactive relationship active in a temporary calculation hope you understood whenever we do modeling right we can create only one active relationship apart from that we can create multiple inactive relationships so if you want to use that inactive relationship in any calculation then you have to use the use relationship function okay uh, next thing is explain how to use power query m language for advanced data transformations so for this you can tell all the activities like you can do the filtering you can split the columns you can merge the queries append the queries you can create custom functions so all the data transformation you can do here these things you can explain uh, if you have any experience you can explain with that as well and then differentiate between cross filter and treat as in dax so cross filter changes how relationships filters tables okay so what you can say tell is cross filter will change how relationships filter tables so for example setting bidirectional filtering inside a measure that is an example of cross filter okay and treat as what treat as will do is it will apply a table of values as a filter on another table without a physical relationship okay whenever you want to apply a table of values 
as filter on another table then you can use the treat as okay so these are the round one questions one of the connections shared round two questions are also shared to me so if you find this video helpful and if you want round two videos uh, video as well you can comment on i'll make a video on the round two as well okay so i hope it was helpful so if you have liked the video please like and subscribe thank you so much